Uh, you may have seen these beautiful faces before on national television. Um, you know, uh, WWE superstars Chris Lee and Dennis Jamel Cox <laughs> uh, here on Culture State. Yes, NXT superstars. N- NXT superstars. We're in developmental, but, you know, it's, we'll be at Raw or SmackDown at any point now. So uh, if you missed uh, NXT this past <laughs> week, um, at the end, there's a nice promo package mm-hmm. uh, about their upcoming um, event in Charlotte, NXT Vengeance Day. Yeah. And uh, these two beautiful faces that you're seeing right here. Yes, you saw those faces. Uh, towards the beginning of that promo package. That's right. And uh, WWE decided to, uh, you know, get on get on board. They're on the bandwagon. They're on a culture yeah, state bandwagon. They are. You know, the interesting, because it, it was our interview that we had with Shawn Michaels that they reached out to us yeah. for. They reached out to us. We didn't ask for Shawn. Like, no, 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 no. Shawn needs to come on with you guys. Would you be interested in a potential interview with Shawn Michaels is what it read verbatim. Yeah. And yes. I was like, I got to think about it. Yes. Yes. Thought about for about four (laughs) seconds. Just like other wrestling companies say, hey, would you like a potential interview? So um, something coming up. Uh, (laughs) Something coming up. Which If you don't want to miss that, if you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe to 99.9 The Fan's YouTube page. Elbow, drop that like and subscribe button. We have a full playlist of stuff. That way you don't miss anything. Like our interview with Shawn Michaels. Or other potential big names in the professional wrestling world, which might be coming up in the very, very near future. But Chris, first, yes, this week, it's official. It yeah. was announced. You were there in Charlotte, Frank there. Reich, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Uh, a lot of discussion, not only about Reich being hired, but a lot of the focus, at least in terms of media and us, was the guy who wasn't fired, which is really interesting when it comes to a head coach, is that sometimes we always talk about well, what does this coach mean for this team, their now roster moves, things, and so forth. But a lot of the conversation has been the guy who wasn't hired. Yeah, around Steve Wilkes. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, what David Tepper said he was looking for. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, you know, with Frank Reich, he seems like a nice guy. Had a chance to have a, a quick one-on-one interview with him. Um, he, uh, seemed to be one of those guys that you could sit down and just regular, regular guy you can have a beer with. Mm -hmm. I have nothing bad to say about Frank Reich. Um, so wanting Steve Wilkes to get the job is nothing anti Frank Reich. I will say, however, that one of the things that I am, I've learned, uh, from that day when Frank Reich was introduced, we did get a chance to hear from, uh, owner David Tepper. David Tepper is growing up. Yeah. Seems and like. he admitted his mistake in the last round of, of hiring. And it was uh, very eye-opening as to um, him. Now, he he's took responsibility, but he still has his way of kind of pointing his finger at the media. Oh, he course. needs to get a little bit better at that. Um, and if you want to pay for my services, of, uh, I can help you out with that, with a little bit of media training, Mr. Tepper. I can give you a good deal. Not that you need it, but I can give you a good deal. Um, <laughs> you know, please feel free to call me. Mm-hmm. Um, but he did a good job where he said, Hey, I didn't do the best job, uh, you know, with the process last time in hiring, not that Matt rule is a bad coach. He wanted to make sure that's out there, but he said, I didn't do the best job. He said this time around, he was in every single interview, which leads me to believe that the last time around, he only had his eye set on a couple of people. And once he got into a bidding war for Matt Rule between the New York Giants, that's exactly what set him off. That's what uh, ended up getting Matt Rule hired, which means that he didn't do his due diligence and he realizes his mistake right now because it's set the Carolina Panthers back a couple of years. It has. And like you mentioned, growing up, admitting to making a mistake. And I think, again, it's something that him being a young owner – in terms of actually being the guy that owns a franchise. Yes, he's 64 years old, but when it comes to owning an NFL franchise or any professional sports team, it takes time to learn a lot of this stuff. We've seen it with Tom Dundon and the Carolina Hurricanes with some things with him. Yeah. He's been there for about five, six years now, and we've seen him grow over time. We're starting to see that hopefully with David Tepper. Now the question is, okay, are you going to let these people that you hire do what they're supposed to do? Yeah. That's the thing. Are you going to let them do their thing, or are you going to try and micromanage? That, that's always a, a big thing 
uh, with ownership because you see the ones that let the personnel do what they're supposed to do generally are pretty successful. Like, you know what? I hired you to run the football operations or to be the general manager or whatever it may be. Do your thing. Uh, that That's the big thing that's still to be determined when it comes to David Tepper. But a lot of the stuff that he said, he said the right things. Now, Reich was hired on Thursday last week. They had several days to get ready for that interview. So I'm sure he had some of that media training, Chris, on to what to say and the things to do. But still, I, I what he said, I think, is doing a lot better than than what we've seen in the past from him. So I don't know. We'll see. Time Time will tell. Time will tell if this was a good hire or not, because guess what? Once the games kick off this coming fall, no one's going to remember the press conference. He, he may have had a little bit of media training, but there's still not enough uh, because there's a few places where David Tepper, to me, fell short. Yeah. He was asked directly about, you know, the, the hiring practices uh, when it comes to the organization, specifically when it comes to black coaches. Mm -hmm. And the way he dodged the question was to say, look at the organization. I have a woman who's the president of the organization yeah. and look at the building. We have diversity in the building. Okay, that's not what we're talking about. It's about yeah. coaching and the coaching staff. You are a part of the problem in the NFL where there are 32 head coaching positions out of 32 positions. And then if we go deeper into that, you start looking at uh, offensive coordinators. Not a lot of black offensive coordinators out there as well. You can think of Eric Bieniemy immediately, uh, who keeps getting passed up on jobs because he doesn't call plays. But we pointed that out last time. Why that's a piece of crock. Um, that's the best I can say right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, so it's he he kind of he dodged that, but he he tried to make it seem like, oh, but look at my organization. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool and all, but. At the same time, how many black executives do you have in your organization? Like, do you? I know about, I know Stephen Drummond, you know, yeah. he's, he's one of the or, uh, black executives there, but outside of him, who else? You have, you have the woman and I can't remember her name off the top of my head. And then he has his wife who's in, in the business area. So you have two women right there. So outside of that, show me all of this this diversity that you have. And we're not even talking about the organization though. Yeah. We're talking about coaching. So um, I, I do think that um, that is something that he probably could have done a little bit better and maybe even say like, Hey, you know, I was looking for this specifically. Frank Reich fit this. He happens to be a white male, but you know what? While we're in this position, I pledge to use my team, the Carolina Panthers to try my best to help, um, help this to become a training ground and a developmental area for more black coaches. That's all you had to say. Yeah. That's all you had to say. Instead of the defensive, well, I don't care if you're purple, orange, blah, blah. when you start saying that type of stuff, then, you know, the, the thought in my head is racism, racism, racism. I don't care if they're purple, orange, blah, blah. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> get and then he here. started saying, like, "Well, we got to get rid of the old, like the old boy network and things like that." It's like, okay, like I get it. I get what you're trying to say in terms of like, well, this is my buddy, so I'm going to hire them, which which happens in a lot of industries. By yeah. The way. It's it, trust me. It but what is Frank Reich about to do? Place. Hire his buddies. As in, do Staley? We know he's coming. That's yeah. we're fine with that. Yeah. Do Staley, good running back. Helped him, you know, win, uh, win a, uh, a Super Bowl in Philly. Did a good job with uh, Detroit, uh, by all accounts. But they're buddies, right? Mm -hmm. And it felt like it felt like what he was really saying. Because I get it, there is a good old boys network. But it, what it felt like what he was really saying is, when I came and bought this team, Ron Rivera was the head coach. So you guys just want me to go ahead and hire his boy, Steve Wilkes? No. We got to break up the good old boys network. That's what that felt like to me. Mm. That's what that felt like. It didn't feel like he's really trying to break up a good old boys network. He's really trying to separate his Carolina Panthers from the Jerry Richardson Carolina Panthers. Mm. And that also means I don't want to have the same coaches. I don't want to have the same people around. That's what that felt like. Okay. All right. In my eyes. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. For people uh, obviously watching this, Chris and I look a little different. So we have two different perspectives on this. I never would have had that perspective. 
never would have. And and that, that's not even about race to me. That's that's mm-hmm. just about like him as an owner wanting to separate you know himself from the pack. And you can see like, and I, I do agree with the fact that the Panthers have never had an offensive minded head coach. Yeah, you want to go in that direction. That's cool and all. Um, you know there there's a lot of tough decisions, hard decisions that David Tepper had to make here. He's not in, in an enviable position. Um, at the same time, you got to know that you're going to come across some criticism. You got to know that you're going to have tough questions that you're going to have to answer. Simple and as that. these are just tough questions. There, you may not have the answer at the moment, but there are good ways to handle it. And so far, he hasn't done the best job in handling the questions. So that's that's the that is the real criticism coming from me. Well, one thing we can always be thankful for with David Tepper, he brought Beyonce to Charlotte. He's bringing Beyonce to Charlotte in August. <laughs> Thank you, Tepper. We never would have had concerts if it wasn't for you. Never would or have had concerts. Or running water. Never would have had things. any of that. Maybe WWE coming this weekend. See? You know, WWE discovered Charlotte after mm-hmm. David Tepper was there yeah. because, you know, who whoever would have had pro wrestling in Charlotte before that? Wrestling never existed in Charlotte no. or North Carolina. Until no Tepper. form of entertainment Nothing. before David Tepper got there. Nothing whatsoever. And also Matt Rule. You got to throw Matt Rule in there as well. Matt. Matt Rule brought a lot to Charlotte, right? <laughs> he brought a lot. If, if Frank Reich wins the Super Bowl with the Panthers in three years, what is Matt Rule going to say? And go. Uh, you know, at the end of the, you know, because okay, you know, it, it, be, you know, about seven years or so after I got hired, because you know, in three seasons, that'd be the, you know, the calendar year twenty twenty four. You know, when the Super Bowl's being played, I arrived in Carolina in twenty twenty. It takes seven years to become an overnight sensation, just like you're talking about with Jay Z. So, you know, it, you know at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, I, I helped set up that seven year plan with Frank Reich. But, but you'd also, you also, you if you look at actually go back to my time at Temple. You know, because back in uh, 2016, you know, 2015 and 2016, I had back to back ten win seasons. I brought winning football to the city of Philadelphia when I was at Temple. And, 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 and Frank Reich was a coach with the Philadelphia Eagles, and that, that winning carried over into the 2017 season when they won a Super Bowl. And, and now, again, my last year, 2016, you go you know, seven years later, now to 2023, the, the Eagles are back in the Super Bowl, and Frank Reich just got hired as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. So really my seven-year trajectory is proving out once again. That means Nebraska is going to win a national championship in 2030 under head coach Scotty Montgomery. Awesome. Um, so uh, thank you guys for, for watching this. We'll be talking more Carolina Panthers as we uh, find out who are going to have some positions. Hey, listen, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. Mm. I'm not going to be, um, very adult like ever if they hire Jim Bob Cooter, like the rumors are, um, because we're going to have to say, first off, Jim Bob, your last name is Cooter. I had to look up where he's from. I was like, there's no way he's from up north. That is a southern name all around, all three of them. And he is from Tennessee. Okay. Makes so, sense. as of right now, as we're, we're recording this, no confirmation, but chances that are that uh, Jim Bob Cooter could be joining the Carolina Panthers on the coaching staff. I want to I close on this thought. If Jim Bob Cooter is hired – to the staff of the Carolina Panthers, can we get him and Piotr Kochekov, Kuchi, in the same room together? <laughs> well, now that means we have to draft General Booty. <laughs> Your face. Yes. Your face. <laughs> yes. Make it happen. Your face, man. That was hilarious. Yes, Jim Bob Cooter coaching General Booty would be the best. The best thing ever. The best thing ever. This has to happen. Okay, well, I'm glad here on YouTube we don't have to worry about the FCC. That's all I'm going to say. It's the only thing I'm going to say. Make sure you like and subscribe here on 99.9 The Fitch YouTube page. Check out this Culture State playlist. JBC, come to Charlotte. We need you. We need you, JBCZ. Let's go.